Good evening, gospel revolutionaries around the world in all 187 countries that we have touched in some way, shape, or form. Thank you for joining tonight. We hope all 187 countries are watching. But if it's just the folks in Florida or just the folks in Alabama or Australia or wherever in the world you happen to be, thank you for being here. Nardos Kabidi is watching, so why aren't you? <laughs> My brother's not watching right now because he's backslidden. <laughs> he's off to a ball game watching his granddaughter play softball, and they took my sister with them. So she's having a good time with her brother and her sister-in-law sister that she loves dearly. So uh, I'm actually here in the house all by myself. I should be doing something else. <laughs> I'm in the bonus room above the garage, and right there is my elliptical. I bought that so that I wouldn't have to leave my sister to go get my cardio done. It's a really good deal. You ought to get one because this thing costs almost $5,000 but there's a company that refurbishes them and they only cost 500 bucks. So uh, it's an excellent deal. Why am I of giving free advertising here? I need these guys to be sponsoring us. You're going to be hearing about the Apollos Project from now on. I'll guarantee you that you'll probably not guarantee that you probably. That's kind of a mixed up thing, isn't it? <laughs> Anyway, we're going to be talking about the Apollos Project for most of this year, if not the rest of the days of my life. I am so enlivened by this, I cannot even tell you what this has done in my ability to read the book of Hebrews and also other New Testament books. Now i got to go back all over again and, look, and read it all over again, because this is very powerful. The issue of perfection, which is at the heart and the center of the gospel revolution, is in the book of Hebrews, which uh, we've absolutely determined was written by Apollos and no one else but him. There's not even another candidate that we've uh, been able to include in the possibilities of this like many others do. But the documentation is there. You'll see our proofs of this. And everybody that's heard it says, man, that is ironclad. That is for sure. Hi, Adriana. Thank you for joining, hon. So we're in the God, we are in the Apollos Project. Now, I want to begin, uh, and I will continue to do, to show you how that Paul's teaching is the foundation for the book of Hebrews. Because that's what Paul said. Paul said, I've laid the foundation, and another man, if you read it in context, another man called Apollos is building thereupon. Now, please don't tell me that Peter, James, and John built on Paul's work. Sorry, that did not happen. There was only one writer included in the New Testament who builds on Paul's work, and that is whoever wrote the book of Hebrews, which the overwhelming evidence is that it was Apollos indeed. I was totally blown away, and it's just been like everything else with the gospel revolution. It's like, duh, it's right there in front of you in black and white, so why didn't you get it? So what does that do for us? It gives us a perspective that causes us to, be, uh, to see the gospel from a man's view who used to be, a, uh, was converted from and into the perfected work of Jesus Christ from the ministry of John the Baptist. What a fantastic comparison to be able to hold in our hearts and our minds and uh, to be able to, to uh, look at and gain such a wealth of knowledge. I just, I tell you, I feel like that we've found a gold mine and I can't sleep. I need to be digging in the gold mine. It's there. It's just waiting on us to go and pick it up. It really is quite amazing. You know, Paul made a statement that the camaraderie that you began to see between Apollos and the Apostle Paul is, uh, is throughout all of their writings. It really is quite amazing. And um, uh, here in Philippians chapter three, I just want to focus in, on, I want to do something we just never do in the gospel revolution. I want to focus in on just one verse, and that is chapter three of Philippians verse 15. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if any man, if any think, 
ye, and if in anything, it's been a long time, I'm sorry. <laughs> and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. What is God into revealing things to people? You know, God will reveal that to you. Um, you know, we used to have uh, speakers come around and and if you had sin in your life, you sat on the back row because they were going to read your mail and God was going to reveal everything about you. Uh, uh, people were terrified when the prophets would come to town. Uh, can somebody say, thank you, Jesus, I'm free? <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you, Jesus, I'm free. That's I'll, I'll say it for all of us. But here, Paul makes it very clear that being perfect and having the mindset of perfection can be two different things and a daunting task. But, but God, that's what the Holy Ghost is here for, is to reveal to you your perfection in Christ. He's here to teach you about sin and righteousness and in judgment. Sin, it's done away with. Righteousness, it's imputed. And judgment, it has already passed. It passed on, at the cross Oh, happy day. Oh my gosh, we have so much good news for you. Uh, that's why we're in Pledge Drive. We're going to try to collect as much money as we can. But I'm telling you, this good news uh, gospel is free. And we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining. And thank you for those of you that are going to be answering your phone during the next two or three weeks and helping us out with the Pledge Drive. Uh, we, we have here... Paul's saying, let us therefore as many as be perfect. Now we know from Paul's teaching, we already know he thinks everybody's perfect in Christ. We've all been already been perfected. We know that. We know that Jesus said that the requirement, if you want to be included with God in any way, in Matthew, uh, he said, and I think it's chapter five, Jesus said be, uh, that if you're going to be included, you must be perfect. Now, if you have any misgivings about what that means or just how perfect you have to be, you know, some people think there's perfection is trying. Sorry, trying is not perfection. Perfection is perfection. And Jesus said that you must be perfect and then followed up and said that, uh, the, uh, uh, that the perfection had to be as perfect as, as God you want to know how perfect you have to be? You have to be as perfect as God. Now, you can either take the old method, which to Hebrews, Apollos, the writer of Hebrews, so completely nailed this down and so completely gave an understanding of this perfection. So Paul's speaking about this perfection, and he says, you know, you need to be thus minded. If you're perfect, and we're here telling you, as Paul did, you are perfect. Listen to me. You are perfect. You are holy. You're righteous. You're without fault. You're without blame in Christ Jesus. Now, you need to be thus minded. You need to get a perfection mindset. And if you're going and sitting listening to preachers every Sunday, you most likely, even if you get it, you're going to lose it because they're going to tell you about your faults. They're going to reveal things to you. They think it's their job to reveal to you what's wrong with you. You know, I, I know what's wrong with me more than anybody else does. I don't need a revelation from God to know what's wrong with me. I know already. And, uh, and, and having it pointed out doesn't help me. Has it ever helped anybody to have your faults pointed out? Well, it just doesn't. But having your perfection pointed out can be tremendously helpful. In fact, it can save your soul. It can save the way you think. It can save the way you feel. It is absolutely powerful. What is the Apollos Project? It's where we are taking on this new and vibrant, wonderful understanding of who the writer of the book of Hebrews is, and that is Apollos. And his comparison to John the Baptist's teachings and the fully completed gospel. You see, Apollos and Aquila, I'm sorry, uh, Priscilla and Aquila did not tell John he was wrong. He said, you just don't have the full story yet. And he was preaching John's baptism. And they, they said, well, you, you've got to learn the more perfect way. You've got to find this. And lo and behold, guess what? That's what the entire book of Hebrews is about, is the more perfect way. 
the boy took his lesson from Priscilla and Aquila, and uh, through that lesson, uh, he narrates this throughout the book of Hebrews of this more perfect way. Yes, it's fantastic you did all your confession of sins. Yeah, it's fantastic that you uh, uh, you had repentance from dead works. Yeah, it's fantastic that you went around preaching about judgment. Yeah, it's fantastic that you talked about the resurrection of the dead. But all those things have passed now. Yes, the resurrection of the dead is done. <laughs> yes, judgment is done. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm telling you, I don't know if I can contain myself. Um, I, I, the uh, Even the cold Tennessee spring, <laughs> they call this springtime down here. Do you know it is four degrees warmer in Calgary, Alberta this, today than it is here in East Tennessee? Well, see, I took all the warm air to Canada and I left it there. That's the only thing I can tell you. So we want you to be thus minded, my friends. We want you to understand that the writer of the book of Hebrews, uh, we, will, we will be explaining to you more and more about why this concept is real and why we are absolutely persuaded that Paul did not write the book of Hebrews, which was, I'm telling you, I came out of that kicking and screaming because I felt like I was losing something to give up on my assertion that Paul was the writer of the book of Hebrews. Now I realize that the writer of Hebrews is simply trumpeting what Paul taught and just putting it on steroids, if you will. It's so powerful. It's so wonderful. I go back and I start reading again and I see it through wholly different eyes. Because if you're going to get what somebody's comparing something to, you need to know. You see, we've always read the whole New Testament uh, with uh, comparing, you know, being saved with being in sex, drugs, rock and roll. Well, Apollos was never in sex, drugs, rock and roll. Apollos was in the, jo the baptism of John. And he's comparing these doctrines that he held and held dear and was very proficient in the scriptures. Paul said he was excellent in the scriptures. Uh, Paul said he was an eloquent speaker. Paul says, man, I'm, I'm a real goofball out there. I, I kind of stumble over my words. My appearance is, is uh, not very provocative. And, but he said, but if you think I'm not going to be able to say what I got to say, you think I'm a little pipsqueak, that may be true, but I can say what I got to say. And even Apollos addressed that, that the people that you heard the word, the word of God from, he said, you know, you need to respect these people. And uh, you don't do it because you're going to get a reward or that you owe them anything. It's as as he explained so well in um, uh, in Hebrews chapter six. He said the rain that comes down uh, after after he said abandon all of these old teachings along with the resurrection of the dead and faith toward God. Uh, as he said, you know, to abandon these teachings and move on from them. He said, it's kind of like the rain that comes down on the ground and produces fruit. And he said, the person that works the ground gets the reward from that. And he says, it's kind of like that. But he says, when that ground starts bearing bri uh, briars and thorns, then it doesn't produce fruit anymore. He says, it's nigh unto cursing and ready to be burned. What's he talking about? He's talking about the doctrines that were there immediately before the cross, the doctrines of the John the Baptist, the you got to have faith in God, you got to repent, you got to, we've got, you've uh, uh, got to be baptized, you got to do all this stuff. He has placed every one of those things in a category that now produces nothing but thorns and briars. That's all you're getting out of those teachings, folks. You're getting nothing but thorns and briars. What you've been learning in Sunday school could be nothing but thorns and briars. Why? Because you already got what they're trying to teach you to get. That's why they are trying to teach you how to get what you've already got. What's that? That's called religion. <laughs> why would someone retire and then begin to draw their retirement check and then go to work to get what they've already got. That's just how stupid it is. That's just how far away that Christianity and every religion on the face of the earth that teaches you to do anything, 
to become acceptable or right with God. That's just how far away it is. It's like you working to get what you already received. The only thing is this, and under this covenant, you didn't work at all. You know, the writer of Hebrews says that this whole covenant was based on the fact that God couldn't lie to God. <laughs> I love that stuff. God couldn't lie to God. And uh, so this covenant was established on the promise that he couldn't lie to himself, couldn't lie about himself. And he left us out completely. Why are you perfect? Because you were completely left out. <laughs> The only reason you're perfect is because you were completely left out. As we used to say here in Tennessee when I was a kid, put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> of course, we were just talking about tobacco back then. And it's some, now it's not, you're not really sure what they're talking about. So be thus minded. We're going to be telling you about perfection for a long time to come. We're going to be in the Apollos Project for the rest of this year, at least for the foreseeable future. And I don't know that we'll ever leave it. This to me is like standing, uh, finally waiting for Disneyland to open and finally the gates open and we're able to go in and explore and visit and ride all the rides and look at all the costumes and see everything for ourselves. We can see it for ourselves. Don't you want to see it for yourself? Not so what somebody's told you, but don't you want to see it for yourself? That's what this incredible book of Hebrews has done. So Paul said, those that are perfect, why not be thus minded? Why wallow around in all of these former doctrines that we were all in? If you've been taught about confessing your sins and you're going to hell and, and uh, gaining heaven and shunning hell and uh, judgment's coming and the end of the world's coming, what do you have to say about that, Brother Mike? Poppycock! <laughs> we live in the finished work and the perfected work of God himself through Jesus Christ himself, and it's done in you. We love you here, around here at the Gospel Revolution. Uh, Don uh, Beresford Bartlett joined us just a few minutes ago. And uh, man, I'm telling you, please engage in the PowerCast. You would not believe what a life these things have taken on. If you think you've heard it before, you better tune in because this is so much more than I ever possibly conceived that the Gospel could possibly be. I'm excited, can't hide it, don't want to. Love you guys, we'll see you next time. Answer your phone when I call, I want your money. <laughs>